I thought that both his Jesuit training and his legal education, uh, which a lot of people didn't have a full appreciation of, were so important to him uh, because this broadcast was always about accountability. If you're in the public arena and running for office, then we have an obligation to hold you accountable. Absolutely, and the way he would structure the questions was very lawyerly. We, he, he always knew how a candidate was going to respond, and he was, he was prepared enough to know that, and he would sketch it out in his mind. I'm going to ask A, that'll get us to B, that'll get us around to C, and then there's D. <laughs> and he, he knew how to get you into that cycle, and he was very skilled at that. Gwen, you were a, a colleague of ours here at NBC News, and now you have your own broadcast on PBS, and I, uh, I think uh, one of the real benefits of having Meet the Press on the air is that for the rest of the week, other Washington journalists uh, would have something to operate from. They would have a whole foundation, right? It's true. Everybody would come to work on Monday morning and decide, okay, the, the plate had been reset, especially on politics, every week based on what had happened on Meet the Press. And for the politicians you cover, the plate had also been reset. You know, when you watch the way Tim did his job, I mean, you knew he had to be prepared. You knew that he expected answers. But he didn't do it with venality, and he didn't do it in a lordly smug way so you always to me it was it was a, you could study as a journalist the way you ask a question and then the way you listen for an answer Tim didn't just if someone said oh and by the way I killed my wife Tim heard that a lot of journalists <laughs> would just keep going and so he was always and because he bought him up and because he was so fundamentally curious about people and about issues he knew instinctively what it was that you had said which was going to be interesting to people at home if you don't have the curiosity it shows I suppose if Tim had one continuing question on this broadcast for people who came here because in the hearts and minds of even the most lowly uh, elected official, they think maybe one day I can get to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and Tim really understood that. So he would always, uh, always ask, are you running? Let's take a look at some of that. So you're not even considering considering running for president. I have no plans. I'm running for no, no, majority. No, all right, let's try it this way. Will you, will you say categorically this morning that you will not run for president in 1992? Tim, I've said many, many times. We're listening. I've, I've said many, many times. I'm majority leader. I'm enjoying being majority leader. We have no That's doubt you're enjoying it. But will you say categorically? I have no plans or no intentions plans. of doing anything else. John Kerry, you going to run for president in 2004? <laughs> I'm running for re-election in 2002. How about 04? Uh, I'm not making any decisions beyond O2. Gray Davis? Uh, I'm focused on keeping the lights on <laughs> and making our <laughs> but schools But you're not willing it out. I'm, the only election on my horizon is re-election in 2002. How could be? You're not running. No, I think uh, America's elected a guy from Hope, Arkansas. They've probably had their chance at that. <laughs> I, I, am, I am running. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you ever want to be president? No. You know, I'm, ever? No, I really... Never. Uh, You'll never run. You know, Tim, I have no intention of running no, for president. No, but that's, a, that's no intention. Either I will never run or I might run. You know, your good friend and mine, James Carville, told me, Tim will ask you this 900 different ways, but the answer is the same. I, you know, I do not intend to do that. What's your decision? After careful thought and my desire to retire our supremely selected president, uh, I've decided to run as an independent candidate for president. But I don't know how many Period. ways to say no in Period. this town. I really Period. don't. I will not run as president for president. <laughs> I, I, I have no intention. I don't want to run. I think I people who run, run are great, but I don't want to run. It's a Sherman S. statement. Uh, uh, Sherman S. statement. You're done. You're I'm, out. I'm done. You going to run for president? <laughs> we'll hear it here first. But it's fair to say you're thinking about running for president in 2008. Uh, it's fair. Yes. Um, Tim's very good friend, Mike Barnacle, my pal as well. Mike and I have talked about this a lot. Uh, Tim had a great, that question was not just idle speculation. He wanted to land on the front page of the newspaper the next morning. That was one of the tests that he had here. Meet the Press was successful if they drove the news cycle. Oh, there's no doubt about that. And off of what Betsy and everyone else has said, there's, there's no way people could really comprehend the depth of planning and preparation that Tim would put into this program. And I can tell you, old pal, from the heart that I, I can certainly comply with one half of your request. I won't whine, but I can't commit at it's the end cry. of this program to not crying because we sit here on this set with this in the backdrop and as Luke Russett told me yesterday that this program 
was Tim's second son. Mm -hmm. And he loved this program. He loved it as a vehicle, an educational vehicle for everyone out there, uh, for everyone out there, for people in the news business as well as everyone who views this program. And uh, we will all continue, but it will just never, ever be the same, although I will hear his laugh forever. And this is wild, which was another favorite comment that he would say at the end of a broadcast, or this is big. He would come here early in the morning, earlier than anybody else who ever yeah. prepared for these broadcasts, like 6, 6.30, right, Betsy? Oh, yeah. And he would rehearse the questions. I mean, he would read them out and, and look to the camera and do them and anticipate as Played she... Played both sides. Right. Yeah, well, he, he had that... He, he would have made a great prosecutor. And in a sense, sometimes, although always quite fairly, as James pointed out, he was a prosecutor on behalf of the public good here. He was going to get to the news, he was going to get to the story, he was going to get to the truth. And he knew how to do it skillfully and fairly, and never condescendingly. Uh, and there was always attached to Timmy, on this program and in his conversation with public people especially, a Columbo element. You'd be just walking away saying, yeah. <laughs> I skated on that one. You know, say, Mr. Mr. Brokaw, just one more question. You say, before you go. Yeah. <laughs> And, 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 Tom, and Tom, can I add that also this, this studio, I thought of it as the Church of Tim. He was the, also the great uber priest. I would actually get a pass from my own pastor not to go to church on Sundays <laughs> if I was going to be on Meet the Press. He got that. And Maria, out in Sun Valley, uh, when you talked to the governor of California about appearing on Meet the Press, did you give him fair warning about what he may expect from Tim? Uh, even well, though I was listening. Everybody talking about how prepared Tim was. Tim was a, um, I thought was so interesting the way he tried to get people to come on the program. Talking about being prepared, he'd hound you uh, <laughs> for months on end. And he would always call me. I remember after when Arnold was running, then after he was elected, he would call me all the time to check on me, see how I was doing. Then he'd kind of veer the question <laughs> to, you know, Arnold needs to come on this show. He can't get respect until he comes on the show. It's <laughs> rite of passage. He needs to be on this show. And, you know, he's not going to be anybody until he comes on this show and eventually uh, he was right you know and uh, I saw people on the Republican side prepare to go on that show and I saw my uncle on the Democratic side sit down and prepare to go on that show and people were equally terrified I think uh, to go on that show and they also prepared because as everybody said they knew Tim was also going to be prepared and they knew it was a rite of passage James. And I love the way he he'd go after people to get on that show he really worked that that angle just as much as being prepared once they finally agreed. And Doris and James, I want to get your take on this because I always believed that he would that he elevated journalism by working first in politics because he saw it from the other side. He knew how political people saw journalism and how they thought that they could manipulate it. And he knew not just where the bodies were buried, right. he knew where the earmarks were buried, he knew where the votes had been taken. And if some candidate thought he could wander off to East Bicycle Falls, Kentucky and say <laughs> something and get away with it, he'd be held accountable. Well, the thing is, he, he, he understood, he loved politics. I, when I used to run campaigns, the first question I'd ask somebody I wanted to work is, do you like politics? And if they didn't, I had no interest in hiring. I don't care how many degrees they had or what I did. And people need to understand this about him. And he would sit, and we would talk literally every day but Friday. I generally wouldn't call him on Friday because, he, you know, that's, he was in the zone. I'd talk sometimes two, three times a day. And he'd say, you see what this guy's doing over here? Or what do you think about this? Or why don't they say that? He never got out of it. He always was in politics. He, get, he went into journalism, but he understood it in a fundamental way. That so that, 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 and people that watched the show understood that. It, that he, he, look, the thing about that, I just one thing I want to say is the question I'm most often asked about Tim is, is he really a good guy as he looks like? And the truth is, he was a better guy. He was a really a better guy than, than even you think he was. And the reason he was is because he had so much of a little boy in him. Oh, is that About an enthusiasm in, in for sports, for politics. He, he just, I, I'm no, I didn't have a friend that I could like just talk about politics or move or what someone was doing or what Huckabee was doing and what the effect of that was going to be three things down the line or, or, or how Edwards was, you know, 
it, it just it's just stunning that that somebody had that passion and that depth of, of the subject and right. we don't have a big tradition in this country of people being in politics then in journalism or going from journalism back into politics but Tim really dropped that firewall because he did it with such integrity absolutely I mean he was able to become an objective